the, the idea of oneness, the experience of oneness, I think is the great aha of our time. It's the great insight of our time. Um, you know, there's, there's no such thing as a local reality. Uh, everything we do, uh, everything we think, uh, everything that we experience is really part of uh, uh, the great whole of the universe, the web of life. You know, it's, uh, it's something that has been discussed, as you know, for centuries, uh, eons. But it's, um, it's an idea whose time has come, finally. And uh, I think with the divisions we see in the world right now, uh, it's an idea that needs to be discussed even more and expressed. And I think that's why people are so interested in the, uh, in the idea and the experience. Well, there are a lot of uh, problems in the, the human community out there, you know, you know, as we know. And it's almost all metaphysical. You know, it's almost a, a, a battle between religious ideologies. Uh, and like any ideology, it's, it's a, um, a separation in the communication between people. And I think that the idea of oneness, especially human oneness, and the idea that we, we really share an energy, an energetic in the universe, we share a, um, a, a sense of place with each other, um, because of that, you know, it's, it's one of the roads to peace and, and to resolving, uh, you know, the many, many problems that we still have out there. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's a way of awakening into consciousness, which itself is, has the attribute of oneness, of, of feeling that we're part of everything. Um, so the insights, as I've described them, are all are all about you know waking to the awakening through these archetypal firings in the brain, you know the, uh, the steps in the consciousness. I call them insights, but they're really just sequential uh, elements in in the awakening of our culture in this historical period, the human culture I'm talking about, into uh, what I consider a totally inevitable consciousness. Um, we have to survive, of course, to do that. But it's an inevitable fulfillment of what we're hardwired to become. Uh, it's what we want. We don't always know what we want. We want more fulfillment. We want more meaning. We want more personal expression. We want more money or power. Whatever we think we want is a subset or a, uh, a minor um, part of what we really want. And what we really want is to grow into a consciousness that is our birthright, again, what we're hardwired for. And that includes all the rest. It, conclu it includes feeling secure in the world. It includes having personal, a personal sort of evolutionary project or mission that really thrills us. Uh, and it includes watching as, you know, these mysterious coincidences and, and you know, very stirring intuitions guide us, you know, in daily life and, and, and move us through these opportunities to, to make our contribution. Uh, you know, that's, that is a, a, a way of life, an experience level in life that uh, we glimpse, but it's, in, it's inevitable. It's where we're going. We're supposed to live at this high intensity of inspiration and the, and watching with awe as little miracles happen to allow our dreams to come true. And the only thing uh, that we have to do is step into that, which means getting out of our own way. Well, I'll tell you where we are. I think we're, uh, we're evolving toward a, uh, a grand aha about uh, what life's about, uh, what the purpose behind life is. Uh, I think that uh, I would even say that this generation uh, people who are alive now are, are uh, uh, supping on the ingredients for this great aha. Uh, in other words, we are awakening to what people have wondered f f ever since you know, we started drawing on caves, and that is, what is this life about? You know, why are we here? Uh, and I think that uh, just from the experiential evidence that we have uh, uh, have collected, we're now ready to integrate that into a full sort of integral way of life 
uh, that uh, is very clear what we're doing here. We're doing here to uh, learn what we need to learn in order to exercise our personal thrust of evolution that is, that is ours. Uh, and altogether, uh, humanity is evolving toward uh, you know crescendo that I fully uh, have described in the in the book in the Celsian prophecy in the ninth insight. It's I think where we are is we're all we're all getting these right. We we have a dream or we have an intuition to do something. We don't even know what it is, but we start pulling in information. We should be here. We should talk to these people, and pretty soon it's a project. So you know all the all the books have been about you know, have been motivated that way, and um, certainly the movie now uh, has been motivated that way. Um, so it's one after the other in terms of these epiphanies, um, and I think that's just the nature of it. You know that's that's what we're all learning to do, and again we have to let go to it. Uh, it's. It's an interesting uh, balance between too much ego and not enough ego. So that we gotta we gotta be strong and we gotta be lively and we gotta make good rational decisions at the at the same time we let this this whole right brain into our experience so that we're guided and we're seeing these mysteries and so you know it, it happens to me a lot, you know, I could um, but it happens to everybody a lot, regardless of whether they know exactly what it is that they're experiencing. I think, again, it's, the, it's almost the result of the field of discovery has reached a certain point where it's clicking into everybody's experience, and then they're, uh, they have to integrate it into what, what uh, again, is inevitable to be a, a, a new lifestyle, a new way of looking at everything. I think that what we're integrating is both sides of the brain, uh, which includes this rational side that Western man has championed, uh, and also this the what has been called the irrational or the um, the intuitive side that it's always been championed by, uh, you know, or, or talked about in terms of women's intuition. So it's a, pr a feminine principle I think that's being integrated into the into the, the, the into the masculine. Uh, but it's also uh, Western tradition and Eastern tradition. It's also left and right hemispheres of the brain. It's all one integration that's taking place, uh, in my view. So, you know, I think our time is is a really fascinating one from from those perspectives. You know, all the seems to be maybe pieces that have been simmering out there for thousands of years uh, are really ripening into something that we can. Uh, take a bite out of and, and integrate all together now into a, a heightened level of experience. One of the key ingredients is to be able to, to have the experience of an interconnection with the world, uh, with everything, which is essentially with the divine. You know, because what, what fuels this sense of oneness is, is that, I believe, is that everything you see, you, you realize it's sacred. Uh, all of nature, you know, everybody, uh, all that, that we uh, are inside, you know, there's a sacredness to it all, to all of existence, uh, which is one of the reasons that you don't feel alienated from everybody, from the so-called enemies or, uh, you know, all the, all the great sages, you know, the mystics, they all say you have to you have to love your enemies. You know, you have to connect with your enemies. If you have enemies, it's not something that you're doing to them. It's something that you're doing to yourself because you cut yourself off. As soon as you have a, a negative idea or a sense of revenge or, or the idea of getting back at someone, uh, it, it doesn't hurt them. It hurts you inside because you have then cut yourself off of the great, from the great source of, of uh, divine inspiration and intuition and all the, all the rest. Uh, so it's absolutely uh, imperative if people really want to, to integrate this experience, not just get flashes of it when everybody's feeling lovable, but if you want to integrate it into a full life, there's no other way to do it than have a practice of connection where you practice 
plugging in to uh, the great source, to God, uh, because that's where it all flows from. And uh, once you do that, then the world becomes sacred, and you look around and realize that you're connected, that everything is a part of you. Um, the idea that we are individual islands, uh, again, makes us doubt or have uh, be alienated from or dehumanize or de-spiritualize other people. And if we do that, then we cut ourselves off. We, we cut ourselves off from the sacredness that's everything. Well, I think our experience of God is, is uh, very clear and, very, and all the same, no matter what religion we talk about. Uh, the experience of God is loving inspiration. Uh, it's a communication that, that is personal, that has guidance. It's not abstract and it's not um, conditional. It's always there if we come back to it. And we, when we're cut off from this divinity within, it's because we've cut it off. We've done something uh, that's not godlike. And as soon as you do that, you cut yourself off. Well, ego is is you know is a psychological construct, you know, uh, intellectual construct. Uh, so it's a word and it has a bunch of meanings now. But the meaning that's most relevant to our experience, our spiritual experience, is a sense that we have to be in control. We have to make all the decisions. We have to ponder everything. We have to make sure that uh, we are given, and this is sort of the shadow side of it, that we're given um, respect and that we're given, um, uh, 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 you know, the credit and the acclaim when things get done that are, that are nice in our lives. You know, that's the part of us called that we call ego that wants more and more control and has the, the illusion that we're doing all this ourselves. And of course what happens when you have a higher experience, an, an uh, integral experience, is that you realize that you're, uh, there's a part of you that has to be rational and make decisions, but there's a whole different part of ourselves that gives us a sense of well-being no matter what, what the condition is of the world around us, that gives us a sense of love, that gives us a sense of guidance in these hunches and intuitions. And as soon as we learn to follow those, then, our, then we step into that flow that uh, allows things to get done in the way that they need to be done to make a real contribution in the world. You know, the world would change dramatically overnight if people really felt connected to every part of the universe and held it sacred uh, overnight. Uh, we couldn't have any enemies because when we're yelling at our enemies, we're really talking to ourselves. Uh, so we would have to be communicative with ourselves. Uh, we have to we have to step in and be the the, the the positive leaders. You know, we have to go in and and try to get to the bottom of disagreements in a positive way with ourselves. Uh, and we also have to think that in all things out there there's a message for us that can be positive for us, uh, which is so important when we talk about the competition between religions. No matter what religion we believe is the best, we have to assume that there's something godlike in the other that we can learn from, that we can expand our own uh, spiritual perspective uh, through. And if we do that, then um, it's the first step toward uh, communication and and, um, and uh, acceptance. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's the key. It's the key to world peace. It's the key to uh, a, a positive evolution in the world. And it's, it's the key to having the greatest life that we can have.